All right, let's go. <laughs> Hey, Keith from Beat the Casino. Right here we are live in Las Vegas on Fremont Street. We're having a great time playing blackjack and baccarat. Come on down, join our club. Okay, Keith here from Beat the Casino. Welcome uh, tonight uh, to our program here on Let's Talk Baccarat. So, um, <clears throat> over the last couple of days uh, since we've been doing this, I've been getting a lot of questions. Um, a lot of folks are watching on Facebook and YouTube, and one of the things that may be missing um, is a lot of folks never played Baccarat. So I thought I would uh, take a moment tonight and uh, for those experienced players this will be review. But you know I'm amazed though at sometimes how uh, some folks don't really understand the rules of Baccarat, the hit rules. And you know so I thought I'd go over them tonight and show you a couple hands and uh, let you take a look at the cards and uh, you know, uh, play through some hands and explain uh, what the hit rules were. I think it'd be valuable. And, uh, you know, from there we can go ahead and, uh, you know, maybe clear up any uh, any points of confusion. Um, when you first look at the game, it can be uh, hard to understand because the hit rules um, sometimes are hard to, uh, hard to, to remember. But uh, I have a real easy way that... Um, uh, um, makes it easy to remember the hit hit rules, um, and uh, you won't have any trouble understanding it uh, after we go through um, um, the rules. So let me uh, let me pull up my other camera, and uh, we'll deal some cards, and I'll explain the rules as we go. So let me get to another scene here. So there we go. So right here, I'll have my cards now. There's a real easy way to remember this first, and I want you just to remember four numbers first, okay? Now, the object of Bakra is closest to nine wins, okay? Okay, so the first rules you've probably heard of before. Uh, if on the first two cards, any total is eight or nine, the game's over, and whoever has the highest one, either eight or nine, wins. So Baccarat is very easy. It's, it's, you can think of it as playing red and black on roulette. That's really what it is. Um, only is done with cards. And, you know, we, I won't go into all the slight edge for Banker and all that right now. It, it isn't for purpose of, the, of discussion. It's just for getting someone who's never really played the game uh, to gather an understanding. So if we take out some cards, and I just want to take out some cards, any face value card, just first of all, to explain kind of how it's scored, uh, you'll always see something like, like this on the table first. And uh, let me get move this over a little bit here so you can see everything. There we go. So there's one or two things to remember. Uh, tens are zero. Okay, so this is two to five. Now, the way folks do it very quickly and easily is they'll go ahead and they'll simply just add the two together, 12, and then drop, drop the first column is probably the easiest way to do it. Hi, Greg, thanks for stopping by, and hi, Fred. Uh, we're we're going to do some uh, basics. I got a request to go over the basics of Baccarat, how to play the game. Um, so I thought I'd do that tonight. So thanks for stopping by, and perhaps you can chime in and uh, you know, offer your opinion here. Um, in, in any event, this would be 12 uh, to 15, or in reality, in a Baccarat world, this is two and this is five. So this side, this side right here, um, is, is, the, is leading the game at this point. Okay, so on, to the right of the dealer, which is right here, okay, this is the player's side. And that's just, has nothing to do with the players at the table. It's just what they call it. It's the player's side. And this is the banker's side. Okay, so you have player, banker. It's no different than red or black. Now, uh, because of the lockdown, I can't get my, my, my new felt that I got on, on this table here um, in, uh, embroidered yet, but I will. But anyway, just realize this is the player side and this is the banker side. So when you walk up to a Baccarat table, it says you can bet on player or you can bet on banker. Now, the only decision that you have to make in Baccarat is how much to bet, okay? So there's no decisions. 
Once you bet, you just watch the cards be dealt. You don't have to say hit, stand, or anything. The rules are automatic. Now, let's let's take a look at some some examples that I said first off about uh, eights and nines. So if any two cards, and I want to put these, uh, we'll set these up. If any two of the hands, no matter what the other side has, total eight or nine, the game is over. So if this is dealt to the player, and I'll deal them correctly, but I'm just trying to walk you through the basics first here. You always get a lot of critics when you well, no, no, they didn't do it right. I'm, I'm just putting out cards for example purposes, okay? Um, so if these were the first four cards dealt, the game is over, and this side, player won eight to three. So eight or nine, you know, if it would have been this way, then the banker would have won um, eight. 8 over 3. Again, add the two cards together, 13, 3, 18, 8. However you want to do it, count this zero, however you want to do it. Um, so that's the first thing to remember. Now, the next thing that you want to learn are the hit rules. Um, let, let's start with, I always like to start at the, st the top. Let, let's, let's start at, at, let's say, for instance, each in the first two cards, each hand is uh, given a seven. There's no hits. Okay. There's there's no hits when either hand has a seven. Okay. There's no when the total is seven. That's it. Um, so that's the that's the first one to remember. Now, I want you to remember this. These two numbers, four, two through seven. Okay. Five, four through seven, and six six and seven okay so what does that mean so the hit rules are determined by what the banker has and what the third card player is okay so what the hell does that mean okay now there is an exception with three but i don't want to deal with the three on banker let's start off and let's put some cards out here okay so how the heck can we get a total of well let's do it this way sorry So let's say, for instance, here's a three. Oh, and by the way, ace is one. There's that. So let's say, for instance, and we'll call this is our banker side, right? Move it over so you can see it, right? Okay. And this will be our player side. Okay. Let me just make sure nobody's asking a question here. Hey, Keith, Bakras not red and black. It is more to it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, when I'm talking about Bakra, I'm talking about the chance of, of winning. And, I, you know, I don't want to get into the minutia. I'm just trying to make an example for people who've never played the game. It's, it's red and black. It's a coin flip is what I meant by that. So let's say, for instance, that the banker has a four. And the player has a hand that needs hit. It isn't a seven or above for now. Or it's actually when player has a six or above, he never hits. But just remember, I wanted I told you to remember those numbers two through seven. Okay. So here here's what happens. If if I when I hit this hand for player, when the dealer does rather, okay, if that card is two through seven, I'm gonna hit the banker. If it's not, the game's over. Okay, so that's the first thing. So is that two through seven? Well, no, it's a zero. It's a ten. Okay, so the game is over. Guess who won? Banker. Four to one. Okay, this is 11 plus 10. It's 21. Just drop the first column. Okay, now let's say, for instance, if in fact, let's find a different, okay, four through seven. So there's a seven. So now the banker has a total of eight. But since this is seven, in other words, or a two through seven, I'm sorry, two through seven, it's a seven, we still have to play the, the banker gets another card. So in this case, wow, <laughs> okay. So that was the only card that, could, that the banker could have won with. Okay, notice his total now is nine, and the banker's total, oh no, I'm sorry, is nine. It's a tie, okay, or no, eight, I'm sorry, eight. So eight over nine 
the banker wins. Now, if this the, the, if this card, so there are certain. I guess the the the, um, the the way to remember this, there are certain cards that are dealt on the player's hand two through seven. That when they're hit on the player's hand and the banker has a four, okay, determines whether the banker gets another card. So any card that the player gets when the banker has a four, that's two through seven, the banker must draw another card, even if he's ahead, okay? So there are some times when it's, it's, it can reduce the, the banker's hand. Like, say, for instance, if I hit this, obviously, and so here we have, uh, here we have a, uh, a, a total of four. Well, if I put an eight on it, it just went from four down to two, right? 11, 12, okay, or two, okay. So in that case, sometimes hitting isn't always necessarily advantageous. So the, the rule to remember is anytime the banker has a four and the player has a hand that ne has to be hit, and that'd be any hand under five or under the player must hit, then if it's a two through seven, the banker must take another card. Okay, so you, hopefully that, that cleared things up. And, and you kind of have to watch it a little bit um, to, to see what happens and to get the flow of the game. But if you stand behind a Baccarat table, you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly by knowing that rule. So when the banker has a four, the, the banker will get another card if the player's card draws two through seven. If it's not a two through seven, anything else, eight, nine, ten, or ace, then the, then the game is over. Okay. Okay. Now, so remember, the banker has four, two through seven, he hits. Now, if the banker has five, let's put a five on this here. The banker has five, and the player has some other total. Okay. So I probably should have met, mentioned that if, if both hands are pretty much, if the player's hand is five and under, He's always going to hit, okay? And then that'll determine whether the banker gets another card. So here, the player has a, a 12, or a, yeah, 12, or 2, okay? Well, it's not 12 or 2, it's actually 2. And the banker has 5. Now, when the banker has 5, when the play, after the player draws and hits his hand, if the banker, if, it, if it's a 4, 5, 6, or 7. So remember, if it's a 4, it's 2 through 7. If it's a five, it's four through seven, okay? So again, if, if we draw this hand, okay, there's a seven. So a seven takes that to nine, right? It's the best hand you can get. The only thing that can happen is if he would be lucky enough to get a four now, he'd, he'd actually tie the hand. But notice that since it, we drew a seven here, they get another card, and it's three. It's the same cards that we just did, okay? If, 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 if in fact this happened... Hit the, hit the 12 with the 3, it's not 4, and the banker has 5, it's a tie hand, okay? It's a tie hand. So you can see what, what can happen. If you hit this with an ace, all right, let's put an ace on there. Hit it with an ace, the game's over, okay? 4 through 7, ace stops the hit, okay? All right, so now let's go through one that some folks, uh, it, it may cause some problems for you if, you if you happen to have a hand. If the banker has a six, let's get a hand of six out there. And this one doesn't come up too often. Okay. And, and let's say the player has, has this. Okay, so he has 12 again. If the banker has a six, if the player's third card, in other words, his hit card, is a six or seven, you got to hit the banker, okay? So it, it, it happens that when um, you can hit the banker when the banker actually probably has a pretty good hand. If he has a six, it's not a bad hand. But if, 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 the, bank, if the player's third card is a six or seven, if that would come out, okay, then in fact... We have to hit, everybody thinks the game's over. It really isn't, okay? So there he's up at nine. We still have to give the player, or the banker, I'm sorry, another card. Let me move this. Oh, 
I think I moved it the wrong way out of the screen field of vision here. There you go. Okay. So again, um, player's hand. The third card was seven. The banker had a six. So we had to hit it one more time. Okay. So, so those are the hit rules, most of them, for bankers. So the only time you really have to worry about things is when the banker has a four, when the banker has a five, and a banker has a six. Okay. Now, there is one more rule for hits with banker, okay? If the banker has a three. And they, this is a real easy one to remember, although it can be missed really easy. If the banker's total is three, let me move this over a little bit, and the player has a hand, like here, zero. Okay. The only card that you have to worry about here is eight. Okay. Not necessarily worry about. Sometimes it works to your benefit. Okay. If the banker has a three and the player's third card is an eight, the game's over. And that's the only one. So when the banker has a three and the player's third card is an eight, the game's over. That's it. So if you hit it with any, what that means is if you hit this, say, with a zero, okay, you still got to hit the bank or the, 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 uh, the uh, dealer will hit the bank. Okay. Sometimes it's easy to miss. Now, an easy way to remember that is remember the band 38 special. That's what they call it. They call this a 38 special which means the game's over. The banker had three, player hit it with an eight, the game's over, okay? Where, where this helps you is when the banker has three, or the player has a total of three, banker has a total of three, they hit it with an eight, and it reduced the player down to one. So, so that, those are, are, are pretty much all the rules you have to remember. And anytime there's any other combination, just remember on the first two cards, really if the, if the first two cards for both sides are seven, for the first two cards are eight or nine, for one side or the other, the game's over, okay? If the first two hands are seven and seven, or obviously seven, eight, or nine, the game's over. Pretty much the game's over if both totals are six, okay? The only time there'd be an exception is if the, if the, if the dealer has to hit, or the, or the uh, player has to hit, and gets a six or seven on the third card. So if the banker has six, pretty much the game is over, except with that exception uh, if after the player hits. He's not probably not going to hit the banker with a six. Now, you know, th that, that'll come up sometimes uh, when the player's third card is a six or a seven. So any other time, the, the banker won't hit. Okay. So just just one more time Let, let's just go through it again Let, well, let's deal a couple hands so you can see it in real time how's that so this is the player side we'll put that over there so there's three there's a five right okay so the player has seven and the banker has five so seven to five now anytime the the banker has uh, 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 below five you're gonna hit it the player has a seven. You never hit seven, he's gonna stand. Okay, so we hit it with a two, so now that's a tie hand, okay? So you gotta just remember that anything above a six, the player isn't gonna hit. And they're always the first to act. The player will always, they get the first card and they're always the first to act. Okay, so here we have a natural, an eight, on the first two cards over three the game's over the player doesn't get a chance to hit let's see if we got any comments or questions here <laughs> does everyone here understand how to play <laughs> i don't know well i had a request for some to go over the hit rules so i figured we'd go backwards a little bit here today and it's it's nice there are some new players so that's why we're taking the time Okay, so here's 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 one where we're gonna see two hits. Okay, uh, probably. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Okay, because anytime uh, the, the the banker's hand are, are pretty much a zero, one, and two, you're gonna hit uh, no matter what. 
Uh, the only time you start running into exceptions are when you get to three, four, five, six. Okay, so three, four, five, six um, it can can cause exceptions with hits. Anything zero, one, two on the banker side, you're going to hit no matter what the player has after his hit. Okay, so this is five. So that that's going to get a card. I'm going to put it on top. They normally wouldn't do that. Okay, uh, it would normally go over here. But just so I'm not out of field of vision. So now the the player has a good hand. It's up to eight. But we still have to hit the banker, right? Okay, and it's it's zero. So that didn't really help his hand. So here the player won eight over one. See how it works? Okay, so let's go again. I deal three or four hands, and I'll talk about uh, commission and betting. Okay. So the, the player has five and the banker has seven. Uh, the, the banker's not going to hit. It would never hit on the seven. But the player always acts first, but just so you know. So we put a six on that. So six and three is nine and two is 11. Just drop the first side one. So the banker won seven, seven to one, seven to one. Okay. Let's deal a couple more. One. One. Eight, one, still one, two, okay, 12 and one. So the player gets a card. He goes up to three, 13, three. There's a tie, okay, three to three. Ties pay eight to one if you bet them. They happen one in every 9.5 hands. So you, a little bit of a bank uh, house vig there. Okay, two. So there's one again on the player, two on the banker. He goes up to five, up to seven. So you see, it's a pretty easy game. Once you bet, you just sit there and watch the cards. And you just have to remember the hit rules. And you'd be surprised how many uh, players don't know them, by the way. <laughs> so here we have two, and here we have zero. So it goes to one, but now, now see, that's the funny thing about um, Baccarat. By hitting this, you can still lose, right? If he gets an eight, then player wins one to zero, okay? So let's see what happens. He got a nine. Well, look what happened. Here he, ha here he was ahead when he hit. He reduced his score down to one, so it's a tie one to one. So it's, it's a fun game. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, so let's take uh, just... Just so you understand commission. Okay, so commission, there's, there's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of variations on the game to now. But traditionally, it's played with, uh, uh, you, you pay the banker pays a 5% commission when he won. And that's because the hit rules favor the banker. He's going to win a little bit. I think, you know, 1.17% more times because of the way the hit rules are set up. So what the casino does is they take a small commit. Well, it's not really small, but they take a five percent commission uh, on the banker when you win. So let's say, for instance, we're playing along here. Say we bet a hundred bucks on banker, and it, we'll put out put our hundred dollars on banker there. So there's a four on player so far. Now we had a natural eight. Okay, so so the banker won. So the five percent commission. Uh, in the a lot of lot, there's a lot of ways the casinos do this. Sometimes they keep track of it and you pay it all at the end of the shoe. Sometimes they take it out immediately. There's different variations where they have non-commissioned games, which they get the commission. It's just with different scores. But traditionally, this was done like this. What they do is they just take the commission right out of it, and instead of you they paying you a uh, hundred dollars, okay, they would have paid you ninety-five dollars. So that's a five percent commission. Okay, so you bet a hundred. If you'd have lost, they'd have took your hundred. But when you won, they paid you only ninety-five. Okay, so that's that's how it that's how the commission works. Always five percent. Okay, if you bet a quarter, okay, they'll take they they just adjust as you go. Okay, it's 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 not not a real big deal. On on the player side, um, it it's 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 even money. So if you bet $50, you're always going to get $50. There's no commission, uh, nothing to pay uh, on, the, um, on the player side. So I, ho I hope that um, 
uh, Keith, you, you know the player have advantage over the banker and it happened two times. And just trying to help you a little, how do you bet on hands? James, you bet at least the minimum. Okay, does everyone ha understand how to play? No, no, that's why we're going over. Yeah, you just basically bet. Okay, so one more thing we didn't cover in betting is we're going to talk about um, ties. And you can bet ties. They happen uh, one about nine in every half hands. Um, when a tie, it's, it, there's always a separate place on the table where you put your bet. And you'll see a lot of people, they, they may bet 50 or 100 on banker, and then they may bet 5 or 10 bucks on tie. Um, if, you, um, if you bet on tie, uh, and, and you bet on banker or player at the same time, and, and the hand ties, you don't lose your tie. You don't lose your banker player bet. You can either leave it or take it back. Now, you got to watch if you play online or if you play at Stadium Baccarat. That's one of the difference, differences is... Uh, if you tie on Stadium Baccarat, it, it'll remove your bet. It doesn't automatically rebet it for you. So you just have to be careful with that. Um, you know, obviously when it's chips, they're, they're still setting there. So uh, if you forget to make your bet again with Stadium Baccarat and you wanted to bet bank again, you, you may forget it and then win the next time. But if you do hit the tie, so you, you get your, you know, in some places they say it's nine to one. It really isn't. You always, in any bet, you get your ten dollars back. You don't lose the bet, and then then you would this would be paid eighty bucks. Um, so if you bet five dollars, you get forty bucks. So it's a pretty easy way to bet. Now there are other bets that they have um, that you'll see, uh, and I can go into a couple of those. There's one. Uh, there's two that I should probably mention. Uh, one is called a dragon, and one is called a panda, usually. And there's some real different ones in Vegas at the Palms that we've seen from time to time, and all over the world, actually. So let's say, for instance, um, there's one bet that's called uh, the dragon seven. And what that is, is, and it, the payoffs are a little different um, with, with, depending upon the, uh, where your plan? Let me just make sure I got everything zoomed up here, uh, so I can do this. Okay, so here's our player, and here's our banker. Right, make sure here. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, of course there's a spot for banker and player. We we, we got that. Just like there's one for red or black. Um, so, okay, let's say, for instance, that the bank, uh, the player would hit here, and he got a zero. Okay, so now the, the, uh, the dr Dragon 7 bet is if, if any uh, three-card total of the banker um, totals seven, that's a Dragon 7. Now, what they do sometimes is sometimes they do it as a side bet, where they're just playing a regular commission game. So if the banker hit like this, okay, uh, let me put that over here. If the banker hit like that and his three card total was seven, that's called a dragon seven. And depending upon uh, where you play, okay, uh, first off is it has to win the hand, okay? So it did win, it's zero over seven, okay? So, if he wins with a three card seven and you made that side bet, they usually pay it, some places pay it 40 to one uh, if it's a non-commission non -commission game, which is they'll just, any time that you win with a, a bank or three card seven, they simply will just say the bet pushed, okay, even though you won. So it's a way to take commission where they don't have to figure it out. I, I don't particularly like playing that way. Uh, but if you make, if you do happen to bet it as a side bet, if you bet uh, five bucks on it, you know, it'll pay 40 to one. So in this case, it's, you know, 200 bucks. Um, so it, 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 it can pay some big odds if you happen to be lucky enough um, to hit it. Okay. So that's a dragon seven. The other one is a panda eight, which is simply the same, almost the same thing. Only the player side has to have a total of eight with three cards. So anytime that would happen, let me just set it out here. So if the player came up and had four, and you know the banker, say for instance this happened, oh. 
So now, and again, uh, the, the way it works is they have to win. So if you're trying to figure this stuff out and, and you see it and sometimes you're wondering what the heck happened, uh, why didn't I get my panda bet? Now you gotta bet it, they don't pay it automatically, obviously. But if the player has a total of three card eights like that, okay, and then they end up winning the hand, okay, here in this case it's eight to zero, eight to zero, then and you bet the panda, it usually pays twenty five to one. So, uh, you, you know, if you bet ten bucks on it, you made two hundred and fifty bucks. If you bet five bucks, you got a hundred and a quarter. Uh, plus, plus you won the bet too. I forgot to tell you that too. So if you bet, you know, ten bucks on, uh, or twenty five or fifty bucks on player at the same time, um, then you won that too. So those are the two most common things that you see. Um, maybe the only other one that I've, well, not the only other one, but one that I see that's uh, kind of popular. They have it a lot of times. Uh, I know they feature it at some of the station casinos in. Um, in Vegas, and I've seen it in Macau too. Is uh, is is this when a three card eight over a three card nine? If you bet that, and there's some variations. Sometimes you pick the side which has the eight, and pick the side which has the nine. Um, but sometimes you can just bet that this will happen. It usually pays somewhere in the vicinity of two hundred to one. Uh, you know, which is a huge bet um, if you happen to hit it. So a three card eight over a three card nine, any combination of that. Of course, they both have to hit twice, one to eight and one to nine, which is a rare combination. So, so that's what they're talking about. I don't know what exactly they call that, just a three card eight or three card nine bet. Um, also, too, you see people, uh, there, there probably is a couple more. There are some bets that um, the first two cards are pairs. And I think they pay pretty much 11 to 1 uh, when I was playing at the Hard Rock in uh, Tam or not Tampa, but uh, uh, Hollywood, Florida. So if you pair the first two cards, you can bet on that in some places. Not every place, um, you know. So, um, so, so those are, are, are some of the basics. Uh, you know, the, the most important thing uh, at first is to... Uh, understand the hit rules with respect um, to bank. Uh, the four, just remember two through seven, the five, four through seven, and the six, six and seven, and then the 38 special. And, and you'll be okay. You know, um, you can learn Baccarat in 30 minutes. And as you can tell from chat, if you come here every night, uh, after you learn it, 30 minutes later, you're given advice on what to do. So it's, it's a fun game. Uh, I think it's real important that you know the hit rules, though, um, uh, because sometimes dealers, you know, uh, not so much anymore because uh, they have the automatic shufflers and, and the card scanning when the cards come out. So, but once in a while, you do see a, a mistake. Um, when we used to play big baccarat, we used to pass the shoe, and the dealer used to have to try to stop you if you're going to hit something that that shouldn't have uh, shouldn't have occurred. So, so it's a lot of fun. Just just. You know, memorize those four simple rules. Uh, the rest of it by memorization will come very easy because obviously, if the first two cards are generally seven, eight, or nine, or six, seven, eight, or nine, for the most cases, the game is over. Whoever has the highest total won. So uh, that's what you can. You can you can mess around with the ties and the uh, dragon and panda bets and the three card bets and the pair bets. You know, I think these pay eleven to one pretty much. I forget what the exact odds are. In any event, it, Baccarat is a lot of fun. Uh, it ha provides the best uh, the best odds in the casino, a little bit closer uh, than some of the other 50-50 games. Um, so it, it's a great thing. It is what it is. Thanks for the 5D booklet. Yeah, so if you want to learn more about Baccarat, we do have an awful lot of resources at, uh, at Beat the Casino. And, you know, I hope you'll take the time to stop by and... Uh, you know, uh, maybe join our club if you're serious about really learning. We have some uh, some of the best players um, uh, in the world at our club. Um, uh, if I if I could if I could actually say that. So, <laughs> um, you know, uh, and we have practice sessions every night. Uh, uh, I'm online here every night. 
Um, Monday nights is our premium members practice session where uh, you get to meet probably some of the best players in the world, to be honest with you. Uh, we have a lot of very serious players on uh, Beat the Casino all the time talking about strategies. You can see talking about the 5D strategies pretty hot now. Uh, came back into flavor. Uh, we have the 87% solution. The thing about it is, is any system will never work all the time. So we take a look at all systems. We teach you how to adjust to the game that's going on. And you can apply some of these strategies to roulette. I know some people uh, are looking at uh, some of our statistics that we track in Baccarat applying them to roulette. And, uh, you know, my first love is blackjack. I want to get back uh, to doing a little bit more in blackjack again, too. Uh, we were did an awful lot back in the early 90s with uh, card clumping and non-random cards. And, uh, you know, kind of carried it over to uh, kind of simultaneously did that in Baccarat. But we didn't write an awful lot about Baccarat back then. Uh, but lately, uh, you know, we, we've gotten uh, into Baccarat and looking at the statistics of Baccarat. And, uh, you know, come up with a, a lot of great things uh, in our Baccarat club. So, anyway, um, I, I, until next time, I'm going to uh, leave you with a uh, look at all the fun we have in Vegas. Hey, Keith! Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Great! Are you going to go play Baccarat tonight? Yeah, you going to come along? Yeah! Alright, let's go! All right. <laughs>